midst of the church, he opened his mouth. The Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. So today we celebrate the feast of St. Ephraim of Syria. So he was from Syria. He's a deacon and a doctor church. One of the neat things about St. Ephraim is he wrote amazing teachings, but they were all psalms. So he's someone that everything that he wrote, it was a psalm. And I don't know if you've ever been to an Eastern Rite uh, Divine Liturgy before, but you'll hear them just sing and sing and sing. And a lot of those kind of prayers and that style of singing comes especially uh, from St. Ephraim. Uh, so he was someone who also just had very beautiful um, insights about who the Blessed Virgin Mary was, and he would just sing these truths out um, in the church. So it's a reminder, especially for any, um, any of us singers, to remember that our words that we sing are called to be teachings, and when we sing them, we, we pray twice. Rather than let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. For her sins healed a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon, Saint Ephraim, exalted in singing of your mysteries, and from whom you received the strength to serve you alone. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. from the first book of Kings. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, Move on to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar, and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. And when we had eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. 
When I call, answer me, O my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. yourself, but be a gift. 
And when you're a gift, the Lord will provide for you. Do you see how this widow could have said, I don't trust you. I don't trust God. I need to take care of myself. I need to put things into my own hands. And yes, this is the only thing that I can do. I can just make this food right now. But if I give it to you, then I won't have that extra day. And yet, the sort of paradox of this is by giving yourself away, by being a gift to the other, you actually find yourself. That's what the whole notion of what it means to be a person. And this is the whole teaching also of uh, marriage and family and the theology of the body. A person will discover themselves by learning how to be a sincere gift of themselves to another. And so selfishness, self-centeredness, narcissism that just focuses on ourselves, in doing that we lose ourselves. When we give in charity, we actually discover ourselves. So now let's go to this gospel now, because there's another part of that. What about in a situation where we've been hurt, we've been disappointed, and there's a sadness that's creeping in, that we just find ourselves just sort of pulling back, saying, you know, I only have this left, and I'm just going to make it for myself, and then I'm going to die. It's like that, that candle that just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it's like, what's the point? Maybe some of us are feeling that right now, where we're just kind of putting our hands up saying, what's the point? Maybe we're being a little like salt that is losing its saltiness, its flavor. So how do we rediscover that? It's by going back to the source. And especially going back to the source of your encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. To go back to those moments in which you discovered your first love with Jesus. It's important to talk about that, write about it. Maybe you've talked about it many times, but maybe as we've gone through these past several months and certain hurts and disappointments and fears and different things like that, maybe have had you maybe focus on the sadness and maybe we've become maybe deaf to that original voice of the Lord saying, this is how I began my relationship with you. This is how I started to walk with you. And I've never left you. And so if we could take time now and meditate on, when did I first meet the Lord? When did he come alive in my life? And that joy, because it's really about joy. Now, I know there's one, one, one uh, person who's watching this named Jean. And Jean loves to talk about joy. So that's for, that word is for you. Joy is the strength that gets us out of the sadness that sucks away the saltiness. And there are so many cultural forces right now, both outside the church and in the church, that are just sort of pressure cooking us into just giving up joy. But that's the key right now. Joy keeps you on that middle road where you don't fall off this side or this side. Joy is what keeps you focused on the Lord because you remember that no matter what happens, you are loved. And joy helps you to look at your neighbor and realize that they are a gift to you. Whether they annoy you, whether they disagree with you, whether they hate you, they're God's child, too. And just like every single person in your family, 
was given to you by God. You didn't choose your family members. You didn't go to the supermarket and say, you know, I'd like that brother. I like that sister. I don't really want that one right there. Let's go to the other one. In families, we, we don't choose our siblings. They're given to us. And they're given to us as gifts, whether sometimes it's hard to see that or not. Joy is what will keep you focused on the Lord that will help you to see your neighbor and to love them in joy. And that joy then can be contagious. It's the light that goes out. It's a light that can't be hidden. It's a light on the mountaintop because when someone is filled with joy, people are drawn to that. Saying, how can you be happy in a world like this? You could just point to the Lord and say, I'm loved. And you're loved. And he is helping me love you. That's the flower. That's the oil that the Lord promises. If you in a joyful heart, St. Paul says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So in joy. Be a gift of yourself to others. Serve others. Listen to others. Sacrifice for others. And in doing that, the joy of the Lord will come again into your heart. It's like how in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, there was a moment in which the Lord left the temple and went over to the Mount of Olives. The presence of the Lord left, and there was a, a, a desolation and emptiness that's there. But the Lord made a promise, saying, I will come back to you. And joy is what will open the door to say, come back and be my strength. Let joy Guide you, lead you to God and to one another. Vertical, horizontal, the joy of Jesus loving us from the cross. Pray for us sinners, 
now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious Lord, hear the prayers of your people, which we offer with sincere hearts, and answer them in accordance with your divine will. In Christ's name we pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of the blessed Saint Catherine be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you, O holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabato, Venis un Celi et Terra, Gloria Terra, Hosanna in excelsis, Terra with a
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
give them their allowance of food at the proper time. And let us pray the act of spiritual communion. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of joy. My Jesus, I truly believe you are present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed St. Catherine they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. So remember that um, right after Mass I'll be available for Confessions in the Garden of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, I'll be there until about 10 o'clock or so. So if you're thinking about what's a way that I can grow in joy, sin covers the heart that keeps the sunlight of joy from coming in. You have to go to confession to just let that stuff go. So then you can receive the joy of the Lord. So think about that. If you want joy, God's mercy is really the way to go deep into that. Also, um, look for today, during this morning, um, information uh, about our plan for reopening. We start our daily masses on Thursday. Um, that's kind of the beginning of the reopening process there, but all of that, including the sign-up registration, um, all those different things um, will be available today. Um, so just keep an eye out for those things, but we'll let you know. Um, and then remember that on Sunday at 3 p.m., I'm going to be doing a um, adoration holy hour right in the front of the church right here. And so if you want to come in your car, and then you can just stay in that car, and then that way we can have a lot of different people here. And then I'm going to come around and then bless individually each of you within in your car as well. So um, just get ready to just receive that that grace of being um, in the presence of the Lord's Eucharistic grace. It's a beautiful way of getting ready to, 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 to come home during this time. And then just a reminder that we, um, if anyone wants to help in the greeter ministry, in the cleaning ministry, that would be really essential to open up hours of adoration and, and things like that, then please, uh, contact the parish as well um, with, with a desire to do that. Finally, we're going to pray, um, after I give the final blessing, we're going to pray the prayer to the Most Holy Trinity, which is a novena from the Knights of Columbus, for national unity and an end to racism. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 